Covenant Podcast exists to equip listeners with theological content from a 1689 Baptist perspective. We pray you find this resource edifying, faithful to Scripture, and Christ-exalting. Now, let's get started. Welcome to the Covenant Podcast. Today, I have the privilege to speak with Pastor Jorge Rodriguez Vega. So, welcome to the podcast, brother. Thank you very much, Austin. It's a pleasure to me to be here with you and uh, talking a little bit about Confessional Baptist uh, legacy. Yes, yeah, you uh, introduced the topic to us, Legado Bautista Confessional, That's and right. um, we're going to be doing this interview in English and in Spanish. We'll do English first, but uh, before we get started on our conversation, you are a first-time interviewee to our show, and so when that happens, we like to ask uh, our interviewee to tell our audience a little bit about themselves. So can you tell us about yourself, whatever you want to share concerning your conversion, your call to ministry, your current ministry, uh, ministry responsibilities, or whatever else you want to share with our, uh, yeah, our show? Sure. Thank you very much, Austin. Yeah, my name is Jorge Rodriguez. I'm from Ecuador. Um, the Lord saved me when I was 15 years old. And uh, for his grace, I have been involved in the ministry for uh, as a pastor for 10 or 12 years. And uh, his grace has been amazing with me, uh, even with my sinful way to be in the, in the past. And so uh, now I'm the pastor of the um, uh, Sovereign Grace Baptist Church here in Santo Domingo. The name in Spanish is Iglesia Bautista Gracia Soberana. And I'm serving here uh, for seven, eight years around that. Uh, for the grace of God, I'm leading the Confessional Baptist Seminary of Ecuador. That's an affiliate seminary of CBTS. And I'm working uh, with a pastor school that we have in our, in our church, uh, training men for the ministry. We already have uh, three students living with us and uh, taking classes every day. Uh, with me and Tess, uh, my partner in the ministry, uh, God's willing in July, the last days of July, he will be recognized as an elder in the church. So we are so happy about it. And working with Confessional Baptist Legacy, uh, publishing books and, and you know, try to uh, put in our legacy in, in our minds in Spanish for our people in Latin America. So that is a very short way to say what I'm doing and, and who I am. Yeah, thank you for that. And like you said, the topic of our conversation is confessional Baptist legacy, or in Spanish, Legado Bautista Confessional. So, um, two questions we want to ask you. First, what is LBC? And second, how and when did it start? Well, uh, LBC means Legado Bautista Confessional. And uh, the idea with this uh, uh, book, Publishing House, was uh, trying to to have in our hands in Spanish, all the books we will require for the curriculum for training people for the ministry, you know, training men for the ministry. So in the past, when we uh, began our ministry with CBTS, helping uh, to train men in, in our countries, one of the biggest issues uh, was trying to find the best books for the readings. You know, that is an, an important issue. So uh, we, we so. Uh, ourselves trying to see or trying to say things like, hey, we don't recommend you that book very much, but you can read that and then we need to talk about it, you know, things like that. Or read that book, but don't read that chapter because we don't recommend what they said or things like that. And even when we understand that we will not be in agreement with everything a book will say, uh, it, for, you know, Reformed Baptist background, that was almost nothing that you can read. We are so thankful. One of the first uh, very, very Baptist book that we have in that sense, in a covenantal background, was uh, the book of Pascal de Not that we have in Spanish. And then, you know, uh, trying to be in that line, we, we said we need to do something about it. So I begin to talk with people like Richard Barcellos and, and Dr. Waldron and say, hey, can I do like a translation of your work? And just for the students, we, we want they read it and and, you know, that was the, the beginning of that situation that in uh, 2019, I was in a meeting with, uh, in the providence of God, that was amazing. Jeff Johnson uh, from uh, Conway, Arkansas, was here with us in Ecuador. 
So I was talking with him. I said, Jeff, we need to begin something like this. What do you think? And he said, hey, Jorge, I'm, I'm with you. Let's do it. And next month, for the providence of God, Dr. Waldron was here in Ecuador. And I said, Dr. Waldron, I talked with Jeff Johnson. And he said, Jorge, let's do it. And so that was the beginning of uh, LBC uh, with Jeff Johnson, Dr. Waldron, and uh, Eduardo Flores. He's a pastor in Costa Rica. Uh, the four of us working together in uh, this kind of board of directors of legacy, uh, having meetings every three, every three months in order to see what books we can, you know, translate work and trying to find more people to work with us uh, in order to have this uh, opportunity to put in the hands of our people in Latin America, the heritage that we have uh, of the particular Baptist theology, you know? So that was the beginning of what we are doing right now. That was in December, 2019. And thankfully the Lord have been so, so great with us helping us and, you know, uh, growing and growing every month, every year with many books. Already we have around 50 different books that we translate or we publish uh, through our uh, Legado Bautista. And we are so happy to see that a lot of people in Latin America have access to our, our books. Uh, last, last week I was in Central America. I was in Honduras. Guatemala, El Salvador, Costa Rica, and in all that places, the people saying, hey, we are so blessed for the books that uh, you are translating, you are putting in our hands. And it's, it's amazing to think when you are working here in your office, you know, just thinking, I, I will translate this book. I hope somebody will read it. And then when you're in other countries and people saying, hey, thank you very much for, for your labors. That's, that's amazing. It's amazing to see how the Lord is using books and and we're hoping that we just do not return to a reformation in in soteriology but returning in in the church doctrine too so we are hoping to to have more baptist background in our country so that that is the beginning and that's what we are doing right now i'll see mm, amen amen so encouraged to hear um what lbc is doing and um encouraged to hear other people uh, giving positive feedback of LBC as well. Um, in your experience, what are some of the most influential religious and theological movements that are uh, in the Spanish-speaking countries that you have ministered to and in? And in what ways do you think LBC can contribute to the expansion of the Reformed Baptist movement in the Spanish-speaking world? Great. That's a great question. And let, let me divide it in two, two parts. The first one will be like the really bad movements, you know, like the really bad doctrine that we have in Latin America. It's the same or very similar what you are, what you have in, in US, USA, like, you know, charismatic movement, but uh, neo-Pentecostal movement with really, really bad stuff there. We need to, we have people that is listen to that every single day through uh, TV channels or, or radio, you know, and, so, so in one sense, that is some of the things that we are working in Latin America in this context. And the people is coming very sad with a, uh, you know, with a very hard uh, heart because the prophet said that they will receive something or there. And then they see this is, this is not from the Lord. And then they're coming to our churches and, and listen to different things. Uh, they, they, for the first time, sometimes saying like, oh, wow, it's amazing to hear what the word of God is truly saying about this, you know? So in that sense, that is the big background, the big uh, screen that we have in, in Latin America, uh, prosperity gospel, charismatic movement, Unitarian movement too. So, uh, so we need to return to the, to, the, to the word of God and we need to return to uh, orthodoxy and to the reformed theology. And in that sense, it's amazing to to see how you know people like Paul Washer or other people like Pastor Suhel Michelin from the Dominican Republic have been a great influence helping these people to return to the Bible and in that sense coming to our seminaries to our churches asking for this solid doctrine you know so uh, in in that sense uh, that that is the big 
the big stream or what we are uh, working with. But then something that I really want to say is LBC, it's yes, it's trying to work with that context, but especially because we can see, you know, the, the uh, revival that we have in our countries, uh, talking about salvation and the people returning to the biblical Calvinism. And, and we are happy about it. You know, uh, there is a lot of churches, points of Calvinism, and, and trying to be faithful to the Bible and returning to the Bible. So it looks like it's a, you know, we are, we are being born again in that sense, trying to return to these doctrines. But at the same time, I think we are in a special moment that we just don't need to return to the uh, Reformation in that sense, but we need to go further in the sense of Baptist doctrine, you know? So in that sense, we are focused in our Bautista Confessional, trying to be faithful to put in the hands of our people a lot of instruction from our uh, fathers, you know, in the past, teaching us about how the church must be. And one of the things in, in my personal um, opportunity to see what, what is in Latin America, I can see a lot of Baptist churches, even Reformed Baptist churches, with a lot of Presbyterian understanding of the regular principle or the government of the church and have been a great blessing for us trying to return to our congregational uh, background in that sense, trying to understand that the church have the keys of the kingdom of heaven and, and trying to teach our people what doesn't mean, how that looks, you know, in, the, in a practical way. So one of my big issues in the last two or three years have been trying to be a good influence for pastors uh, in order to have churches more in connection with what the confession said about what the, the church looks like. So working with the church policy, uh, trying to teach them uh, how how the, uh, the labor of the elder and the church, how that work together, uh, how the church discipline must be, you know, and, and in that sense, uh, the Baptists have a lot of things to tell us. And, and that kind of books have been a great blessing for many people. So you can see, Austin, if you ask some people, they will say, hey, I already read uh, the uh, PhD dissertation of Dr. Renihan about edification and beauty, you know, things like that. They say, like, wow, that's amazing what is happening. Or, oh yeah, we're studying with the church, uh, the, the, uh, the beauty of a true church. I don't know if that's the name in English, the original one, but by Benjamin Keach, sorry, The Glory of a True Church by Benjamin Keach. And, and, and you can see how, you know, it's like open their eyes and say like, wow, we need to change things. But now we know where, what is the goal, where, where we are going, you know? So, so we are happy to be part of that. And, and that is one of the goals that we have in, in LBC, uh, trying to return to the hands of our people, what is or what doesn't mean to have a Baptist church uh, according to our legacy. You know, understanding that we are not trying to find uh, everybody thinking in the same way, you know, in every single way, but uh, having a correct structure of what the church doesn't mean and what doesn't mean to have a reformed Baptist church. So that is what I think is the window where we are working, you know, the goal we have, trying to return to our, our legacy, putting these books in the hands of our brothers in Latin America. Mm. Well, in that last answer that you just gave, you mentioned some of the books that uh, have been translated from English into Spanish, but mm. we're uh, curious to know what are some of the other books that LBC has translated from English to Spanish, and what are some of the works that are planning to be translated in the future? Great. Let me let me tell you, Austin, our vision about that. So we, we have like four points in our vision. Our our goal is translate uh, works from the past, or you know, from from now, from this time. First, from the bap the particular Baptist, you know, their writings, uh, their books. Second, about the particular Baptist. That means, you know, uh, the bio of some of them. We, we have translated the book of my, uh, Michael Haken, 
about Knowles, Keach, and, and, and Kiffin. So, uh, and number three, books that uh, make a huge influence in the particular list, like the, uh, the Kingdom of Heaven from John Cotton. He was a congregationalism, uh, but uh, his influence, we can see that in our Confession of Faith. So, so that kind of books is part of our target too. And number four, books from the heritage of, or, or the heirs of the, of the particular Baptist, you know, like Sam Walter and another uh, Reformed Baptist from, from uh, the modern time. So in, in, in view of these four points, some of the books that we already have translated, we have The Mystery of Christ by uh, uh, Sam Renihan. We have Edification and Beauty by Dr. Renihan, uh, Jim Renihan. We have the book on the Association of the Churches. I, I don't remember the name in English. It's a really hard name, but it's a little one from our BAP. We have a great friendship with uh, Dr. Richard Barcellus. And he have give us, gave us uh, the permission for all the books they have. So almost everything uh, our BAP have in English, we have in Spanish already. Uh, we are working with some of the books that founders have, like The Mystery of Christ. We are finishing Getting the Garden Right, uh, hoping maybe this month uh, publishing that book too. We have Better Than the Beginning from Dr. Barcellus. We have The Covenant of Works by Dr. Barcellus. We have... Um, uh, more of the time made simple by uh, Sam Waldron. Uh, the man as a priest in his home by Sam Waldron too. Um, yeah, let me let me see here my so I can I can see very clear what we have. We're working with uh, with Heart Cry too. So we have been translating and, and publishing again some of the manuals that Paul Washer wrote uh, that have been a very very helpful for the churches about God, you know, uh, the man and his scene, you know, uh, there's three manuals that we already translate of that and publish to Spanish. And we already translate three more and we are waiting for the revision of that and publishing God's willing in, in the part of the rest of this year. So uh, we have a good friendship too with Free Grace Press. And uh, because of uh, Pastor Jeff Johnson, we have published some of the uh, books of Fever Express too. Um, uh, we made a, a, a good and new translation of the Second London Confession of Faith uh, with the help of Dr. Renehan and Sam Renehan helping us with some of the text, you know, uh, going to the original facsimiles and, and trying to understand some of the uh, exp expressions from the past. So Dr. Renahan have been a great blessing for us. Both uh, father and son have been a great blessing and uh, uh, and leading us in um, the understanding of what we have. We translate the Baptist Catechism. I have the privilege to translate the biblical or the scriptural exposition of the Baptist Catechism by Benjamin Bedum. I've been a great blessing. I spent one year teaching that class to my church and then when I was teaching, I was translating. So when I was teaching, I was supposed to translate, and then I revised that. So we published that book in a year, and that was a blessing. It's a, a very good tool for, for our people. We translate the Orthodox Catechism, too, by Her Hercules Collins. We publish the book uh, On God and His Decree by Samuel Renehan, From Pedo Baptism to Credo Baptism. Uh, what, another of the books, Two Things You Must Do to Be Saved by Dr. Waldron, uh, The Fatal Flow by Jeff Johnson, uh, Kiffin, Knowles, and Keach by Michael Haken, um, The Lord's Supper, uh, More uh, Than a Means of Grace or something like that. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I because I know the names in Spanish now, I, I forget it in English, but yeah, that for for Richard Barcellus, uh, uh, the Absurdity of Unbelief by Jeff Johnson, uh, The Five Points of Amillennialism, The uh, Chil Children's Covenant Today by Alan Corner. That has been a blessing to translate that book. That's a little book, very helpful. Uh, yeah, I think I said almost everything. Oh, uh, Reformed Baptist Manifesto by Dr. Waldron, a great blessing. Uh, Green Pastures by Ryan Davison. 
we are working in a little booklet that he have about anxiety. So we are hoping to trans uh, to publish that this week. So yeah, so we have around uh, yeah 45, 50 titles, different titles that we we have published. The, the one of the last one was the faith and life for Baptist uh, for Dr. James Renahan. That is some of the original documents from the assembly of the particular Baptist in London and Bristol and have been a great blessing, you know, open the history in front of people and trying to see all these resources and understanding how they thought about it and how to work together with other churches. That is, I think there's a, a kind of connection between what they had in the, in the beginning, you know, and what we have right now. There's a lot of churches returning to the confession, understanding things, and then asking how we can work together with other churches. So we're trying to help them and, and pushing them in one sense. Hey, you can work with others that have the same, the same theology, the same understanding of the Bible. So, and we're hoping to do this through the books, through the theological uh, uh, training by through CBTS, and trying to help them to work together in a, uh, Baptist associations in each country. So, have been a blessing to work with with many many countries through legacy and. Uh, through CBTS too, because it's in, in that connection, as I told you in the beginning, uh, because of that need of books, that was the reason we began this uh, book publishing house. Hmm. Praise God for that. And uh, I'm especially happy to hear you saying that you have got the Baptist Catechism translated into <laughs> Spanish. I think the Baptist Catechism is my favorite document outside of scripture. And also to hear that you have uh, the exposition by Benjamin Bedham translated into Spanish. I think I noticed on your guys' social media account that you often have um, ads on Facebook or uh, just posts on Facebook where it's Benjamin Bedham in Spanish. So that is so awesome. So encouraged and excited by what you guys are doing and hope it will profit the Spanish speaking world to the glory of God. But our last question for you is, what final encouragements or information do you want to share pertaining to LBC? Well, I, I will encourage uh, our people in, in, in USA. I will tell you something. When some people talk about, you know, the US and what is happening in Latin America, sometimes we can hear the people say, yeah, we have a lot of resources in English, but uh, but we don't use it or, or in a, in a Theological class, there's not too many people there. And looks like in Latin America, we have a lot of people very interesting to, to know, you know, and maybe it's true in one sense, but this is what I want to tell you. That don't need to be like that. You know, we, we have a lot of treasures and it's a good time to return for good ecclesiology, to return to these good books. There's a lot of need in English too. So we need to, republish a lot of these works that have been a great blessing i uh, my my dad passed away one year ago and uh so i was sad you know and i i called sam renahan and said hey could you recommend me uh, a book that i can translate from a particular baptist you know pastor and could be a good help for me in this time you know and he recommended a book i i, I cannot tell you the name of that in english now but, but that was about Job uh, 714. The name of the author is Robert Purnell. It's like the shedder of the weaver, something like that. It's, it's I, I cannot remember. But what I want to say is, it's amazing to, to think that, that was, there's not another publication of that great work from the, you know, the original one. And you say like, what? And, and, and I tried to do magic, literally, trying to understand what doesn't mean in one page that was like, you know, like not clear, asking Sam Renahan, hey, what do you think? <laughs> it, it said in the, in the original one, you know, so trying to understand. But, you know, there's a lot of works there waiting for us to read it, to publish again, to, to make a great encourage for our lives. And I think there's a, we are living a good time, even in the U.S., to return to these kind of books. And, and, and I hope as, you know, as a little sister here, your little sister here in Latin America could 
put in your heart some jealous to think like, hey, these guys are translating Benjamin Bedham exposition of the catechism. I never have read that in English, even when I have three, 300 years, you know, read it, publish it again, trying to work with that in the churches. And, and I hope, you know, you can be with us, being partnered with us. If you want to help to translate one of the books, you can support one of the translators we have. We are, we need a lot of things like computers for the people working with us. I, we already bought uh, two computers for two of our translators in Cuba, and we are sending that for the next module. And we hope, you know, that that will help us to be faster in that sense. But even when you can be with us and helping us and supporting some of the projects we have, there's a lot of things your people need now. So I hope, I hope you can, you know, be encouraged for these works and what we are doing and trying to do the same in your churches. There's a lot of treasures that you can have and use for the good of your soul and the good of the people in your church. So may the Lord bless this effort for our people in North America, and may the Lord bless our people in the U.S. returning to our legacy, our treasures that we have from the particular Baptist fathers. Amen, amen. Well. Much more could be said, and we could have many more uh, delightful conversations with you, brother. And we are so thankful that you are um, playing such a vital role in recovering Baptist history in the Spanish-speaking world. So we just want to thank you for sharing your time with us today. We know that you are a very busy man with many responsibilities. Thank you so much for giving us some time to talk about LBC on the Covenant podcast today. It's my, my pleasure, Austin. I'm always here when you want to talk. And to our listeners, we want to wish you grace and peace. For additional content, check out our blog ministry at covenantconfessions.com. Also, keep up with our social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Next, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. Lastly, thank you for listening to the Covenant Podcast. Grace and peace to you.